Hello everyone, hello parents, carers, families at home. Hopefully this video will be helpful for you in preparing your child for reception. Um, usually we would do an in-person family learning session, but this year that has been a little bit of a challenge. So hopefully this way you can listen, you can pause and stop it and think about things, and then you can re-watch it if that helps also. So please use this to help you however it may. Um, I will send home a printed copy of the slides that go with this, just so you've got them for reference. And obviously, if you have any questions, um, please feel free to give us a little call or see if you can catch me on the door or we can always schedule a slot to talk some more too. So the main focus is going to be on phase one phonics. Phase one phonics covers all of those really key listening skills that your child needs to be able to tune into sounds and therefore get ready to learn formal sounds and actually then eventually how to write those sounds. But this is getting them ready for phonics in reception where they'll start to hear the sounds within words and then eventually learn to write and accurately spell those words. So we're gonna look at environmental sounds, instrumental sounds, body percussion, rhythm and rhyme, alliteration, voice sounds, and then finally some oral blending and segmenting. So this is typically the order that we would teach it in to begin with environmental sounds and eventually finish with blending and segmenting, which is quite an advanced skill um, for our children. So let's move on. So phase one phonics should be really fun and really interactive. It should involve the children, they should be participating, speaking, joining in all the time, and it should be really exciting. It doesn't have to be too long, it can be short and sharp, really fun, interesting activities to get them hooked in to build their listening skills. Um, it will require lots of encouragement and positive praise. They might not always want to do it, but it's about weaving it into everyday life, just doing a minute here, a minute there, five minutes here, and, and just really helping them to build their skills all the time in everyday life. And the real key focus is telling the difference between sounds and then learning to recreate those sounds themselves. And that will really help them with their speech and with their listening as they move forward in their phonics. So let's start with environmental sounds. So I've got some ideas here of things you could do. Um, a listening walk, usually we start nursery at the start of the year with a listening walk and we'll go around setting, listening to what we can hear and trying to tell the difference and give names to those sounds. Um, a really good one is to have a box. So here, for example, I've got a really big box, just an old cardboard box. I would choose some items and put them in the box. As I put them in, I would name them. So I would say I've got a baby. It's my baby. Let's listen to baby. Baby doesn't make much noise. Let's see if we can tap baby. Doesn't make much noise. Let's see if baby's a squeaky baby. Doesn't make much noise. Let's put baby in our box. And I might have some other things in the box that make different noises. I might choose some instruments. I might choose something that could be scrunched or squeezed, like some tin foil or some newspaper. And then I would pull them out gradually and see if they could guess what the sound was, see if they could give a name to that sound. And even if they could try and make the same sound with their voice. So it's just getting them to tune in with their ears to all the sounds around them and really make it explicit and give names to those sounds. After environmental sounds, we'd move on to instrumental sounds. So this includes, you know, just things like singing because your voice is an instrument, listening to different types of music, trying to identify whether it's you know, loud or quiet or the tempo or the beat of music. Um, making instruments is a really good way to do that. So here I've got a bottle and I've just put some dried beans inside. And obviously you can talk about putting one bean in and let's test it. You could put more beans in, does it change the sound? If I shake it slowly, if I shake it quickly, how does it change the sound? You could use it as a rainmaker and as a rattle. You can do lots of things with instruments. And also just using your body, using your hands, using your feet. But we come back to that more when we get to body percussion. In body percussion, we would use lots of action rhymes. So we start incorporating our feet and our hands and utilizing our body. So we might do things like, a sailor went to C, 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 with lots of clapping to help them really be clear that we've got C, C, C. We've got three words there. It's the same word, but it is repeated and the clap helps them to differentiate between those sounds. Or even Miss Polly had a dolly. So you need to get your baby ready, Miss. Polly had a dolly who was 
sick, sick, sick. And you might slow down your singing to help them hear the words. And then once they've learned it, speed up. So you'd be really explicit and you'd get them to repeat, say, sick, sick, sick. So she called for. And if they're missing words, you might go back and count them and say, so she called for a doctor. And you might make it really explicit. There needs to be six words there to really make sure they're not missing words when they're singing and speaking. It will really help to clarify their language. But the main idea is that they're using their body, moving while they're singing. And um, this could be different types of clapping, lots of things you could do. Sometimes we make patterns. So we might say tap, clap, tap, clap, or click, clap, click, clap, or tap, tap, clap, clap, tap, tap, clap, clap. So we start building up patterns using our body. And um, so it's really easy to do at home because you don't need any resources. You can just use your body and things you've already got. After body percussion, we move on to rhythm and rhyme. So this can include some chanting. So you might do lots of repetition, um, or it might be a rhyme that you already know. So like bip, bop, boo, who are you? Two, four, six, eight, hurry up or we'll be late. So it's really getting them to tune into how we speak. Um, and you can do that through lots of rhymes and lots of songs. So you could do one, two, three, four, five, once I caught a fish alive, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, then I let it go again. Why did you let it go? Because it bit my finger so. So you're making it really explicit that the, the ends are rhyming, that they match together. You pause just at the right times to really make it very clear to their ears and they can hear it. So those kind of things are really important to emphasize. When you are singing, really think about the rhythm and the rhyme. Um, we might see singing as really old fashioned, but it's very, very important to help them with their listening skills and to get that sense of rhythm and rhyme when we're speaking so they know when to stop and when to start. And once they start writing, it will help them to identify full sentences and full stops if they can hear when a sentence naturally stops and when the next sentence naturally begins. After rhythm and rhyme, we'd start to teach alliteration. So a really good place to start with alliteration is with their name. So you might have Jolly Jesse jumped, Daddy is doing dishes, Mummy munches muffins. So again, you're really getting them to tune into the, the initial sound of the word. So can they hear that there's three words there? Mummy munches muffins. Again, you might make it explicit. Mummy munches muffins, three words. Have they got the same sound? Mummy munches, muffins, really stretching out the sound and making it really clear to them they begin with the same sound. You might even make a list of things you can find, milk, mug, so you can start to gather things with the same initial sound. Um, alliteration in songs is quite common, so Peter picked, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, and again you try and make it really explicit, begin with the same sound, can you hear that sound? And for alliteration, you might also want to gather some items together. So you might say, I've got a bottle, I've got a boat, I've got a baby, I've got a box. You might start to gather things that begin with the same with the same sound. And maybe you could even choose an odd one out. So you might think, hmm, I've got a box, I've got a bin, I've got a cat, I've got a biscuit. Which ones sound the same? Box, box, bin, bin, cat, cat, biscuit, biscuit. And at the start, that might need a lot of help with your expression, your face, how you say it. You might need mm, box, bin, cat, cat. Sounds a bit different. Biscuit, you might need to be very explicit and almost give the answer away. But as their confidence builds, they'll start tuning with their ears and realize that some words begin with a different sound. They don't quite fit the pattern. So alliteration takes time, but they will start to spot it. There's something easy you could work on each day. Just a few minutes, you could use their name to really hook them in, find things that begin with the same sound as their name, and really tune their ears into what's around them and what you're saying. Um, after alliteration, we would think about voice sounds. 
So again, this is really good for overcoming any speech and language issues, learning to use their voice really well. So saying words in different ways, can you say it quickly? Can you say it slowly? Can you say it in a high voice or a low voice? Um, singing a song, but just using humming is really great for getting them to tune in. So if you're maybe going to play some phonics games, you might start by just humming along and doing and asking them to guess what song it is or la 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 and you might ask them do you recognize that song I've taken the words away. I'm just making sounds with my voice. But can you still hear the song? Can you tell what song it is just by the sounds, by the rhythm, by what I'm doing with my voice? So you can question them and get them to recognise the actual rhythm of the song, not necessarily the words. And obviously, just when they're speaking day to day, you just need to do lots of modelling all the time. If they're saying, this is my car, say, yes, you've got a car. You've got a metal car. You've got a red metal car. You've got a metal car with two doors. You've got a metal car with four wheels and two doors. So you can continually extend sentences and build them up. It doesn't have to have too much repetition. It doesn't have to be forceful saying, please say it like me or please repeat. You can instead just let them be exposed to that language. So if they say, this is my T-shirt, say, yeah, that is your T-shirt. That's your pink T-shirt. That's your pink short-sleeved T-shirt. You can continually just insert extra words so they're getting exposed to that language all the time. And then after voice sounds, we would introduce blending and segmenting, which is really a very high level skill, but will really help them to get ready for reception because they'll be doing lots of this. So at school, we might use a robot voice. So we might say, Matt, mm, at, Matt. So we might try and change our voice just to understand that we're actually doing some segmenting. It's a bit different. We're going to use a robot voice, not our voice, because we don't speak like that, but maybe a robot speaks like that. A robot might say, mm, at, mm, at, mm, at, mat. And obviously stretching the words can really help them to hear the sounds. So you might say, Obviously when we say the sound, we don't say, ah, but you're just stretching it so they can hear it. Sam, 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 mm, Sam. So you can say the sounds and then you can, you can put them together to be able to say the word. So blending is pushing them together and segmenting is splitting them apart. So you might reverse the roles. You might say, I'm going to say the sounds. Can you blend them together for me? Please, can you bring me a k, a up. I really need a k up to drink with. Or have you seen your at? It's cold today. You really need your at. 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 Hat. At. You might have to do lots of repetition for them to hear the sounds within a word. It's not something you need to do continually or all day long, but just now and then you play a quick game can be short and sharp just to introduce them to breaking words up to segmenting them into sounds and being able to blend them back together. This will really help them when they start doing their guided reading sessions in reception. So they'll already have this skill of being able to break words up, to say the sounds and then to blend them back together to make a word. Um, I hope this information is useful. It's quite short and simple, um, but please do come to me with any questions have a read of the slides and I will give you the paper copy as I said before. Um, and these can be lots of quick, simple games you can do at home. Some of them they might really enjoy, like the rhythm, the rhyme, the body percussion, the singing. Some children might not enjoy that as much and might really like the blending and segmenting instead and turning themselves into a robot. So find things that they really enjoy and focus on those to begin with. And then the other skills can come later as they get more confident um, and as they head into reception. Um, I hope this is really helpful. Um, and again, please do speak to me if you need some extra help if there's anything I can do. Thank you.